President Jacob Zuma has announced his new cabinet and has made no changes to the Education Department. I'm joined by Equal Education's Deron Isaacs to discuss this. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jerusha. Now, like I said, huge overhauls to, ca um, to cabinet, but not for education. Yeah, well, um, you know, certain ministers like the Minister of Health and various others have been retained in their positions. Um, the way that an organization like Equal Education works, a social movement, is not to base itself on any one particular individual or particular relationship or lack of relationship, but rather to organize large numbers of people with knowledge and information and a program of action for particular goals. So we're going to continue to work constructively with whoever fills the various seats of government. Um, over the years we've had some serious disagreements with Minister Motsecha. Uh, we've agreed with her on other things where we've expressed agreement like her early decision to move away from the OBE curriculum. Um, and she's hopefully also had a chance to learn from some mistakes that were made in her first term. And there definitely are benefits to continuity. Um, I, I could give you a couple of examples of that. So, you know, um, we've had our disagreements with the minister, but we, we, we're seriously looking forward to continuing to work with her, and we have no objection to her staying in her role at all. But Equal Education has spoken out quite strongly against service delivery, especially in the education department, and of course that came under Mochecha. Absolutely. Um, you know, the minister's job is to implement her constitutional responsibilities as best as she can, uh, or in fact in line with what the Constitution requires. And our job is to hold her accountable and to ensure that she does that along with her administration and all the other levels of government. So it's, we are bound to have clashes, um, even where we agree there might be the need to push things along and create a sense of urgency because there's young people today going to school under conditions where it's impossible for them to get an education. Um, there are areas where we've had disagreements, but that's also normal. And, um, you know, I, I think that there's enough common ground between us and the minister that where it's really important we, we, we can find each other um, if, there's, if there's the will to do so. Um, I think the minister has a lot of strengths. Um, we've always seen her as an intelligent and astute person who understands education. Um, her one weakness has been that she's very defensive and she sees organizations, communities, forces in society that could be allies um, as unfortunately as enemies, which, they, which they're not. Uh, when she came into office she said that parents and communities are your best allies, they need to be your eyes and ears. But sometimes she hasn't treated community organizations like that. So that's a challenge for her in, in this new term that she has ahead of her. Now, Equal Education has also spoken out against Helen Zilla in the past, who spoke favorably about Angie Mochecha. Now, Zilla has also said that this appointment or the reappointment as of Mochecha is good for continuity in Cabinet and for the Education Department. Do you agree? Well, we had... Uh, Premier Zilla said two uh, specific things um, in relation to the Minister. The one was to defend her over the Limpopo textbooks uh, crisis and the second was to defend the minister in relation to her dragging of her feet um, around the implementation or the creation of norms and standards for school infrastructure. On that second point, the school infrastructure standards, Premier Zilla was completely wrong and we demonstrated that uh, to her and to, and, and to the public. And Minister Motsecha eventually agreed with us, and that's why she created the norms and standards at the end of last year after three years of disagreement and campaigning and, and hard work. Um, but Premier Zilla did have a point that it's not the minister who is on a daily basis responsible for the delivery of textbooks in an individual province. And there was multiple levels of responsibility for what happened in Limpopo. And in, in a way, one sympathizes with the national minister sitting in Pretoria or in Cape Town when there are nine provinces, they all have their own budgets and they're all needing to, 
and they're all in having their own policies. But I think that um, you know the premier was a little bit uh, too quick to exonerate the minister because the textbook problem needs national leadership. It, it needs um, an investigation of the many different methods of distribution that are in place around the country, streamlining of those, investigations into the cost of books, understanding why in some provinces the publishers deliver to the schools but in others to warehouses. So the minister can do more. Um, but in general, the point that continuity is valuable is true. Um, sometimes a breath of fresh air can be valuable. Sometimes continuity is valuable. But there is value in this particular instance in continuity. From the perspective of equal education, what do learners in South Africa really need from government and from our ministers? Wow. Um, you know, I, I think the first thing is that sometimes learners who can speak for themselves better than what I can feel that they don't feel a sense of urgency on the part of their government representatives. They, they feel that, you know, they, they will be given answers, explanations, numbers will be quoted at them for how much is being spent this year, but they do not feel that the person on the other end of that uh, TV screen or that desk or that microphone um, has any idea of what it's like to learn in a classroom with 75 students, um, what it's like to go to school without a textbook, what it's like to be come from a home where your parents are not able to help you with homework or don't give you the time to do that when you have to walk an hour and a half to school and the the the, the discussion um, you know the presentation of education issues from our leaders is defensive um, it, it's laden with jargon we actually need them to put themselves in the shoes of learners and to, to make a commitment to learners to every day going to work with, with, with that point of view in mind. Which is, by the way, the same difficulties that, 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 that teachers face. They, they face a lot of the same challenges that students face. And I'm sure they'd also want that sense that that person who I'm counting on to change my conditions of work actually knows what it feels like. One of the advantages of the minister is that she's been there. You know, she, she, she's She's, she's spent time in, in schools that lack resources. Um, but she needs to show that she remembers what that's like. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Jerusha.